Welcome to my week. Glad you are with us. I'm Christy McDonald. A deal for Detroit. It is finally done. But getting a consent agreement in place to fix the financial crisis in Michigan's largest city may have been the easy part. Now it's the anxiety of what's next that Detroiters, its leaders, and the state all have to deal with. It came down to the deadline, but the Detroit City Council, the state-appointed financial review team, and Governor Rick Snyder all signed off on a consent agreement to dig Detroit out of its financial mess. But as the city and region take a deep breath from the arguing and legal wrangling, now the work begins. Here's what will happen. A nine-person financial advisory board will be created. The mayor will have to appoint a new chief financial officer in the next 30 days. There will also be a chief operating officer and a project management director who will oversee the fiscal reforms. The union contracts will have to be renegotiated by the mayor. The council and mayor will have to craft a three-year budget, but they'll need to follow revenue estimating conferences to ensure their spending within the city's means. There will be consequences if the city leadership can't carry this out. The state won't dole out the revenue sharing payments or an emergency manager can be brought in. Joining me as always at the big table are My Week contributors and the editorial page editors of the Detroit News and the Detroit Free Press, Nolan Finley and Stephen Henderson. Gentlemen, how are you? Doing well. Yeah? Glad to be back. So, is there relief <laughs> that this is finally done? We've been talking about this for weeks. Finally, there is some kind of resolution. Well, there's a resolution for the beginning of the process, but there's a lot to do yet. And the success of this depends on the commitment of the city council and the mayor to execute it. This is a legal document that they signed. It has some very specific requirements. It's not subject to a whole lot of negotiations. And if they go in with the spirit that uh, we're gonna work together to implement this, I think it could get them out of trouble. If they go in it thinking they can negotiate every detail and continue the sort of um, standoff and confrontations we've seen over the last two to three weeks, it's going to um, it's going to fall apart. So this isn't the end all be all. No, no. I think what's key now is the, the four council members who voted against this, and maybe some of, of the majority who were a little iffy about it. Uh, Charles Pugh, who's the council president, has got to rally everybody around the idea of working together now to make this work. Uh, if you've got uh, uh, you know an obstinate minority on the council, if you if you lose that majority uh, that they had that five votes, you you have real problems. And this is a management solution, uh, but it's got to be managed to work. This is pretty contentious, though. In the run up to the in the entire vote, can they really? come together and then be able to work with the mayor to execute this on some pretty tight timelines. I don't know if they can work with the mayor. They've not proven that over the last two to three years. And without saying it's the mayor's fault or the council's fault, they just haven't been able to work together. Uh, Gary Brown said at the council table the other day, we could have done these things ourselves. And that's right. Okay. Nothing in this There's agreement in there they, they couldn't have mm -hmm. done themselves, but they didn't do it. Now they have to. And the worst thing that could be could happen is if they continue to fight and bicker and the project manager, the state's guy, if you will, mm -hmm. has to come in and make every decision, force them to do the things they're required to do under this agreement. I think that heightens the bitterness, heightens the divisiveness in the city. If they do it themselves, I think people will stop noticing this agreement after a few after a few months. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, if, if you saw the day of the vote, the, the, the sort of rancor that was directed at specific council members, James Tate, mm -hmm. uh, who people thought would, would maybe flip and not vote for this. Do you think uh, people thought others. that that day that they might be able to sway him in I, those final I, moments? They certainly, they certainly targeted him and really beat hard on him about, about changing his vote. That's not going to go away now that we have an agreement. I mean, there will still be pressure on council members to not go along with the things that uh, the program manager or the board wants to do. Do you think because it did go down to the absolute last moment deadline that this is what we're going to see now that every deadline is going to be right up to the final day it might it, I mean that's certainly a possibility you hope not I mean you hope that they will see that this is their way out and that if they do these things you know a year from now nobody's going to be talking about laying people off or shutting down services but you don't know I mean you have you're still going to have people showing up and screaming at them, the union's still going to be putting pressure on them, and they, you know it's going to be very difficult for them to do the things they have to do under this agreement. Well, and they have to do a lot. And speaking of that, joining us right now on the phone is Detroit City Councilman <laughs> Ken Cockrell Jr. Ken, thanks so much for joining us on my week. 
Hey, thank you. So it's been a couple of days now since the vote and obviously signing of the agreement. Go ahead and tell me what your thoughts are and what your feelings are going forward in the last couple of days. Well, I was listening to your discussion before you put me on with you, and you know, I frankly agree with a lot of what Nolan and Steven said, although I, I, I don't agree with all of it, uh, because at the end of the day, the real onus for the implementation of the of the fiscal stability agreement or consent agreement, which is really what it is, um, the real onus is really going to to fall to the mayor. And, you know, and I will say, certainly given the current situation, I wish him a speedy recovery. But I think the hard truth that everybody's got to accept is that Mayor Bing has not been the most effective leader when it comes to running city government. That is going to have to change. He is going to have to articulate a vision for where the city of Detroit needs to go. And he needs to commit himself and his team to working to implement that vision. The second point, and I really think this is key, is that this agreement does give the city of Detroit the opportunity to really bring in some high-powered talent in the form of a chief financial officer, something that we really should have had for the past three years, and a project management director. What I think is going to be critical is once those people are in place, the mayor is really going to have to step aside and let those folks do their thing. Uh, they can't be put on a short leash and be tugged and yanked at. Once that vision is articulated and everybody's in sync as to what that vision is, he really has to really step aside and let these guys run with the ball. If he doesn't do that, there's going to be real problems. Ken, you've been working with the mayor's staff um, throughout this process. Uh, what is your confidence level that the mayor's staff, uh, Kirk Lewis and, and Chris Brown, will, uh, will cooperate with the project manager and will allow this process to go smoothly? I'm going to be honest with you. I think it's a question mark, and I wish I didn't have to say that. But frankly, an, an early draft of the consent agreement that was given to council actually called not for a project management director, but for a COO. And I actually preferred that model. And the reason why is because I think what the city of Detroit really needs is a strong number two who can basically make things happen on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, I, I kind of liken it to, you know, the first major political office I ever held was uh, a Wayne County Commission seat. I represented the city of Detroit's southwest side on the county commission. And I served with Ed McNamara. And even though that was, you know, towards the end of his tenure, um, it was pretty clear to me that even though McNamara was definitely calling the shots and was in charge, the person that was really running the county on a day-to-day -day basis and making things happen was Mike Duggan, backed up by a strong team of people like Dave Katz and other folks. That really is the kind of arrangement that the city of Detroit needs, and I thought the COO model would have been a better fit with an eye towards providing that. But the problem is the mayor would not go for it. And that's how we wound up with this project management director. That arrangement, I think, is still good. It's not as good as I think it could be. So, again, as I said, and to go to your question, I, I think that people like Chris and Kirk have really got to be prepared, as I said earlier, to step aside and let these people do their thing. That doesn't mean give them the ball and let them run off the field with it but it does mean that they cannot be micromanaged. Uh, uh, Ken, I'm wondering, uh, the consent agreement seems like uh, it frees up council and mayor to not have to worry about finances. I mean, you guys spend a lot of time uh, fighting and, and discussing this stuff now. It seems like this it takes a lot of that off the table and gives you the chance to focus on real policy uh, questions. Is there, is there a sense of relief uh, on your part that, that you'll be able to do more of that now? Well, yeah, I, I have a different interpretation of the consent agreement because the reality is council is still going to be responsible for approval of the budget. Now, the financial advisory board will have the ability to weigh in on certain things, such as the issue with issuance of debt and bond issues and things of that nature. But city council is still going to have to go through a series of budget hearings, which are actually going to begin later this month. Sure. And we'll still have to approve the budget. And... And that's, that's going to be, I think, the next big challenge that faces this process, because the mayor, even under this arrangement, he and his team are still responsible for presenting a budget to the city council, which we have to approve. Right. And I think what's going to be key is this cannot be a status quo budget. I, I really think it's going to be imperative for the mayor to present us with a budget that is something radical, that really seeks to reshape city government. If he doesn't do that, then... 
I, I think that won't be recognizing the new reality that we're operating under. All right, and a lot of work to be done. Our thanks so much, Ken Cockrell Jr., for joining us on the phone on my week. Thanks, Ken. No problem. Have a good one. All right, you too.